Well, here's the Bowery. This is where, where the homeless shelters were. And the, mm -hmm. This this was all bums, you know, bars for nickel a drink and everything. Now you can't afford anything here. You know. Gas is over 80 cents a gallon now. I haven't driven in a long time. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> all the uh, barber shops and everything are disappearing. The rents are going up so much. This neighborhood is still a little depressed, you know. Yeah. You can see by it. The people a little sleazy. That's what they say when they see me. But, uh, <laughs> I met Jamie Gillis. I was helping Jerry Damiano out with a porn film. Jamie Gillis was starring in it. You know. You've been in all kinds of stuff. But Jamie, he did Broadway. I think he did. Yeah. And he did uh, straight stuff. He was a wonderful guy. I mean, I had a lot of fun with him. He I said, get Joey shooting in Plato's Retreat. You ever, you've heard of that. It was a I sex club. Oh, you know, it was a sex club in New York. You yeah. Know, came in, took your clothes off, you know. And I'd come over and say, you want to screw my girlfriend? <laughs> you know, did you bring a girlfriend? You know, oh, it's like a trade? We got a switch. And I said, I did. Well, wait till the other three guys get through her with my girlfriend. She may like you. It was pretty disgusting. Yeah, that's... Uh... Jerry says, go get Jamie Gillis is in the scene. I said, where is he? He said, they had little private rooms, like cubicles. He said, mm -hmm. one of the cubicles. I bang on the door, and I hear, ram it in, ram it in. You know, <laughs> you rip out my kidneys, you know. That's Tompkins Square Park, which was full of drug addicts and hustlers and hookers. And now it's full of yuppie, whatever you call, upper you stockbrokers with expensive clothes on. Sure. There may be a remnants of some cult film people hanging around <laughs> here. You know. I have a, a thing I'm doing as a oh, live show. Oh, uh, Oral Davis, a famous filmmaker of the early 60s, and the guys are doing research on him. He doesn't really exist, you know. Yeah. But he, he, he created everything in films, you know, that, uh, you know, he used oil in, ba in porn film, baby mm -hmm. oil, the first time in the set. And they search the East Village for remnants of where he shot and everything. I have a live show, actually, that I wrote that uh, people come for a lecture on him, you know. And he turns out to be still alive, you know, and have props from the film. Uh, cult film people have collected props from the yeah. film and they turn alive and all that. Bit. Did you know Bill Stadium? No. Oh, this is before your time. Yeah, he had Sleazoid magazine. There's a show a thing on the internet. The, this old lady is waiting to pull into a parking space, and mm -hmm. this kid goes in front of her and pulls in. And he goes, gives, flips her off and walks away. And she takes a baseball bat out of her car and smashes in his <laughs> windows. I was talking about Jamie Gillis. Anyway, I worked on this movie with uh, Gary Damiano, but mainly for Ron Dorfman, who was my friend. And I was sort of production manager, of course, Ron and Jerry Damiano didn't speak to anybody, so Damiano said, I want to shoot this, and you know, he would tell me, and I would tell it to Ron. Yeah. And Ron would say, tell the motherfucker we can't do that, because you're too close to the wall, stuff like that. So, and they said, go get Jamie. And I went and knocked on the door, and I heard somebody yelling, ram it in deeper. Oh, Jamie, you know, split my kidneys over. Slap me, slap me on my ass. So, he had a guy banging him, you know, so yeah. I opened the bang on the chair. Oh, hey, kid, wait a minute. You know, can you be five minutes? So, yeah. so, he came out and we shot the scene, but I became friendly with him, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was very funny, you know. And, uh, yeah. He was trisexual. You know, uh, we were in Germany together, and I said, I said, it's pretty hard to get laid to get brothel, you know. He said, I'll get you laid tonight. And he took me to a Turkish leather bar, you know. Right. Like that. Yeah. I said, well, these are all guys. He said, there's trouble with you. If you're going to be that particular, you're not going to get laid <laughs> with you. But, you know, and he actually uh, asked me to stake out this street corner because this is a girl he was after and he wanted to get, he hadn't talked to her yet. Yeah. It was and I spent a month out. I think he found this good. And for some reason, he wanted me to go to Brooklyn, this girl. 
she just bought a townhouse because she's probably a multi-millionaire now. And she was breeding parrots. They had all the, parrots, huh? Well, all the rooms were sealed. The parrots won't do anything. Yeah. But there's any humans there, so she had they a need their people. privacy? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jamie wanted to break up. So the last time I saw him, he was very anti. We did a show in Cleveland. It was about three weeks before he died. I didn't know it was wrong. Yeah. We've seen that one of the producers we work for together owes him four hundred dollars and stuff that I said uh, we were got the money and I, I thought he got paid you know, so many years ago. I just found a piece of film. I put it on uh, YouTube of me working on that porn film I made with Jerry Dummer. Oh really? And I play sort of the director. I never in one scene the scene that they were shooting I showed uh, Tony found this very beautiful girl at the bus station. She was starving. She, you yeah. know, she brought it to Jerry. And she's having sex with this kid from Brooklyn College. And I go, oh boy, we wanted to get rid of it so bad. And then you know, everything went well to the close ups. And the guy went like, he lost it, you know, couldn't get it up. One yeah. came to it. He went and said that, you know. So Jerry yells, I gladly give $2,000 for a hard on. You know, that's what we're going to We have to. But I said, I'm here. He said, let me see your dick. I unzip and he said, nah, it doesn't, doesn't match. Ron, Ron was a friend of mine who was one period he was shooting. He had a studio in the apartment. He was shooting a porn film, you know. Yeah. Went in there once with a beautiful girl. And he said, why don't you hop on her? It's an experience. I said, well, she said, well, she was a guy six months before. She had to do Thing built, you know, it feels very funny. The yeah. East Village was so remote from everything. Everything was on the west side, a big town. I never wanted to be a filmmaker. You know, what did you want to be? Well, I mean, I don't know. I was interested in writing, and then uh, I wrote the script of Tiger and the Dragon. Uh, it was the first kung fu movie ever, so long ago. We had a history, and uh, I gave it to. Uh, well, I gave it to this girl, Jane Ross, who was a film editor in Adam. She was famous in her day. And she said, I'll give it to the author, the guy that did Planet of the Apes. I said, did you give it to her? No, she really got in an argument. So uh, I gave it to Joe Sarno. I get a call from Joe Sarno. He said, this is a great movie, you know, but uh, I need one with has only three sets and four people in it, you know, and uh, make sure that they don't talk a lot or do anything, and they have to take their clothes off three times in a movie. This would be for <laughs> hard work, you know, so I wrote Career Bed, you know, and he said, this is a classic. I mean, you have eight sets, you know, and there's uh -huh. an extra. So I said, let's do it. He said, well, you have to give me $10,000 to uh, write it. Got 10000 The guy said he was putting up the money, never showed up. But I finally got a guy, and they called Joe Sarno up. He said, got the money, and we're ready to shoot. He said, I'm going to Sweden. I said, when? Tonight. I said, well, we're shooting tomorrow. Yeah. You know, he said, well, I said, who's going to direct it? He said, you direct it. He said, uh, I don't know anything about directing. He says, neither do I. You know? <laughs> what after the Kung Fu movie? Oh, it's still floating around. It's got some possibility. You know, we gave it, oh, I'm trying to think. Sidney Glazer was the United Marian side of the I guess. They actually re released Career Bad in another movie of mine under another title. And I said, since they're doing all these major movies, so they gave the script to Sidney Glazer. And he said, he wants to have dinner with you. And I said, he really must like my script. You know. yeah. Had dinner with him. And I said, you're an expert on China now. He said, I have a problem. He said, I'm married to a Chinese girl. Well, maybe he you know, was a Chinese He was married to a young I think she was 15 when he married him. 
about as band of mercenaries that uh, get hired by this European promoter to smuggle these girls out of Hungary. You know, mm -hmm. he's actually a pimp. You know, and uh, you know that uh, he's already sold the girls to Goring and Mussolini, and uh, you know the, the, the whole chasing and the whole has the army up and when they go to the Pacific, you know, and they said, you know, you'll find this here. It's right in the middle of the war zone, you know, it's just yeah. December, you know, when the Japanese attack. And that's how I got in with uh, so Did you see his movie? You know? The life in uh, sex films, when they made a film of documentary. You know? No. Uh, he always lived very well, and he said he made lots of money, and then in the document we find out his wife supported him. He, he oh, never, really? He never oh, really? made any money, you know? Oh. That's nice. <laughs> you know, he, nobody ever paid him or paid him the second page on oh. the films. And he married this wealthy girl who parents were a ghost, a ghost at the factory. You know? oh. The shows are showing her mother his obituary because he took up, you know. But he was a very nice guy. He lived on right around the corner from the uh, But he was still writing at, uh, up to two years ago in these porn films, you know, which yeah. I think were very outdated. You know? yeah. He thought he added something extra. Did he have a market for that? There's uh, gotta be, there's gotta be people that were still interested in that, some kind of market. Oh, now there's no market. I mean, Not at all. The videos and, uh, he yeah. He didn't understand. He shot films for porn, porn films or some sort of a story, you know, but they found the market. People weren't interested in it when they became yeah. legal and everything. They didn't want to you know. Shelley Abel, Georgina Spelvin, you know, and she got, when I first saw the movie, she walked into the office, but she was working for J.T. Penny at the time. Mm -hmm. and she was a film editor, so she helped me with a lot of knowledge about the film. I never dreamed she'd become a porn film star. <laughs> she was a dance captain on Broadway. So, wow. you know, she was a very nice person. So, and she had a husband and children, so I was quite surprised. When I yeah. Out. Was she still married when that Oh, happened? no, no. They left. I went to yeah. right in her house, and the whole family was born. We were sitting there with her clothes on. You know. I didn't indulge in anything. I mean, I enjoyed porn films when they're funny. But the idea mm -hmm. is these two sex professors find this girl who's this on, on Ninth Avenue. She can't even work on her girl. She's such a bad way, you know, and uh, <laughs> she's dirty. And they said, you know, Henry Higgins type guy. So I can take her and make her into the greatest screw in the world. And, they, you know, uh, and what's his name? Uh, you have to and everybody will want it. Are you kidding? She's filthy. Like, yeah. She has a credit card. Thing, right? a credit card thing. Mm -hmm. And the whole story was that uh, he trains her, you know, and she's, uh, he's in the Royal Palace in London. But he did not know that George Bernard Shaw was an in public domain. You know. Oh, really? He was oh, quite wow. late, yeah. He did, you know, in 19, died in 1930 something. You know. wow. It wasn't really good, but he had a lot of funny things. Mm -hmm. He had a scene on an airplane. Had a great joke. Uh, this guy saying, "Stewardess, can I have a sip of scotch?" I'm not joking. And she said, "Oh, you're going to, sir." He said, "I want, I, I, I want a scotch now." <laughs> Was that good, sir? And said, yes, but can I get a And another stewardess said, the stewardess, you know, uh, can I get a... Oh, she said, you're both of them. So, you know, we're running the end. How do I get a drink of wood? <laughs> the stewardess walks over to a woman going down on the main road. Mm -hmm. so, Tourist class passengers are not out of eat a lot of eat. I remember helping Ron and Jerry on uh, a film for like Uncle Wim and Sharon Mitchell. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think I actually banged on it and it's winking. But she thought I was working on the film. She got very upset. <laughs> when I had the film, Ron photographed it. And, uh, I kept it for a while. I should have kept it. was pretty. I looked at it. It looked so innocent, you know. I, I would have put it on the internet. You know. 
So it wasn't an accident for you, it was an accident for her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she did college lectures and so forth. Oh, really? Yeah. The only time she screwed somebody for nothing, you know, she felt <laughs> yeah. and I guess she still does, uh, you know, she was a grandmother. I lived down the street and I was sitting with this woman. I meet her in the morning, you know, and the guy says, uh, Raquel Welch, yeah. says he's going to be in the Broadway show. I said, yeah, why should I care? He said, you have yeah. breakfast with her every morning. Mm -hmm. I said, that old bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know.